Hello everyone and welcome to the Neutral Zone where you can hear the latest and greatest hockey news. My name is Michaela Krupski here with my co-host Harrison Soap. We've got a ton of content for you this episode with some league news and playoff predictions. Harrison, care to get us started? Yeah, for sure. Uh, starting with the team who has been eliminated from the playoffs, the Buffalo Sabres. The Sabres have fired their head coach, Don Granado. However, no replacement has been named as of right now. The Sabres have missed the playoffs for an NHL record 13 straight seasons. In fact, the last time they made the playoffs, I was in the first grade. This is a team expected to make some noise. Ultimately, they fell short of reaching the playoffs. That's right, Harrison. And another coach under heavy fire ending off the season is Penguins coach Mike Sullivan. The Pens just barely missed the wild card this season, making it the second consecutive year they've missed playoffs altogether. Pittsburgh have also traded Alex Nylander to Columbus, along with a conditional 2026 draft pick, receiving Emil Bermstrom in return. In addition, Jeff Carter has announced his retirement. The Pens forward played over 1,300 games, scoring a goal in his final game against the Islanders. And speaking of retirement, Harrison, a huge name in the hockey world is retiring at the end of the postseason. Go ahead and give us some insight. Yeah, absolutely, Michaela. Jack Edwards is retiring. Edwards, who has been the Bruins' play-by-play -play broadcaster, announced on Tuesday during the final regular season game for the Bruins. And Nesson and the Boston Bruins announced they'll honor Edwards uh, next season. As they should. As for his replacement, the Bruins will conduct a search to find the next play-by-play -play voice alongside Andy Brickley. In my opinion, Edwards will be missed as he was part of my childhood. And best of luck to Edwards on his retirement. Yeah, definitely. Although Jack's broadcasting has been falling off for the past few seasons, I'm really going to miss him and his funny sayings like tumbling muffin and Chinese mustard. I've never known Bruins games without Jack. I mean, he's been broadcasting with the B since I was two, so he will definitely be missed and his replacement will have big shoes to fill. In other news, the Arizona Coyotes are packing up as the franchise has been approved to relocate to Salt Lake City, Utah for the next season under a new name. The Smith Entertainment Group bought out the Yotes from Alex Marullo for $1.2 billion. However, $200 million of those dollars will be split among the rest of the NHL teams. Now, Marullo hopes to build a new arena with the intent to buy an expansion team for Arizona and moving the Tucson Roadrunners to Mullet Arena. Now, who knows if this will happen? Only time will tell. And the Coyotes' last game was extremely emotional for fans and players as the franchise has provided countless memories for the past 27 years in Arizona. The Yotes beat the Oilers 5-2, making their sign-off even more special. Business is off the charts in the NHL, reaching a record-high $6.2 billion annual revenue. Although this is still significantly lower than the other three major American sports, it is possible for the NHL to bring those earnings up to $10 billion by 2030. Now, more people are discovering the game, arenas are selling tremendously at 97% capacity, and I think the Coyotes' relocation to Utah will play a part in the growth as well, especially if Arizona does get an expansion team in the near future. And this is amazing not only for the National Hockey League as a whole, but for the game as well. And speaking of record setting, Connor McDavid got his 100th assist this season. He becomes the fourth player in NHL history to get at least 100 assists in a season, an amazing accomplishment for McDavid. He currently leads the, the assist list over Nikita Kucherov, Nathan McKinnon, and Quinn Hughes. Now, over in Minnesota, Mark andre Fleury has signed a one-year, $2.5 million contract extension with the Wild. The goalie received this year's Tom Curver's Humanitarian Award and was nominated for the King Clancy Memorial Trophy. This may very well be Fleury's last season, as he stated, I'm not doing this again. This is it. Now, he's an absolute legend, I will say, Harrison. Yeah, absolutely. And it's going to be interesting because the Wild also have Philip Gustafson under mm -hmm. their roster as well for goaltending. So I think the Wild are going to play it out and wait till the 2025 free agency as that class is loaded with guys like Linus Olmark and Igor Shosturkin. So time will tell, and we'll see what happens. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, the big part of our episode for this one is playoffs, obviously. See, the New York Rangers were the first team to clinch the playoff berth, and along with the Metropolitan Division and the President's Trophy. Harrison, I know you're really big on the President's Trophy curse. Do you think it'll happen this year? So my thoughts on this is I think the Rangers should beat the Capitals in the first round. However, I think they'll get bounced in the second round of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be surprised to it, but the Rangers are a great team. But look what happened last year with the Bruins. I mean, they set so many records yeah. only to get bounced 
in the first round, blowing a 3-1 series lead. So Rangers should make it past the first round, at least. Yeah, I don't see how the Rangers couldn't make it past the first round, but who knows? Who knows? Now, our brackets are set for the playoffs, and this year's going to be a good one. In the West, we've got Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers facing Los Angeles. Winnipeg finished as the number two seed, giving them home ice advantage over Colorado. The Pacific Division champions, Vancouver, will be taking on Nashville. And the Western Conference champions, the Dallas Stars, will take on defending Stanley Cup champions, the Vegas Golden Knights. Now, over in the East, Florida clinched the Atlantic Division, which means they will have an in-state rivalry against Tampa in the first round. Speaking of rivalries, Boston and Toronto will be continuing their first round rivalry as well. Now, let's hope Boston doesn't choke and maybe even keep it under seven games this time. The Metro Division champion New York Rangers will take on Ovi and the Capitals, and the Islanders will be facing the dominating Carolina Hurricanes. Harrison, this is a lot to unpack. Give me some of your takes on this year's playoffs. So, a couple of predictions I have. First off, I believe that the Stanley Cup Finals will be the Dallas Stars and the Carolina Hurricanes. Ooh, okay. I think the Stars will win the Finals. Uh, if you remember, the Stars, they lost the Conference Finals last year, yep. so they have the experience. And this year, they'll make it to the Stanley Cup Finals and win it all. They are a young team led by Wyatt Johnson, Jason Robertson, and Rube Heinz. Heck, they even have Bruins legend Craig Smith. For real. <laughs> As for the Bruins, though, my team, I hope they make it past the first round against the Maple Leafs. But it's going to come down to goaltending, and yep. hopefully Olmark and Swayman can push this team past the first round. Honestly, I, I would have to agree. Pretty much all these teams are great contenders for the Cup. And I have three teams I think could win, and my take's actually very similar to yours. I've got my top three being the Hurricanes, Stars, or the Panthers. Either one could definitely take it. Hurricanes have been on fire all season and could absolutely dominate through the playoffs. The Panthers have shown stellar performance as well. And Dallas made it to the final last year, and after clinching the Western Conference this year, they can really redeem themselves. And with that, that's all we have for today and for the season. I cannot believe how fast it's gone by, but Harrison, this was a good one. Michaela, it has been a pleasure working alongside with you, and not only have you been a fantastic host, but you are a fantastic friend, and I'm very grateful for that, and you mean the world to me. You really do, and you've put so much work into this show, and not just that, but Deanna as well, and you've done the editing as well as the social media platforms, and I'm very happy for you, and I'm glad you got recognized because you're one of the hardest working people I know. Thank you, Harrison. It's really been a pleasure working with you this past year. And as some of you may know, this is my last episode with The Neutral Zone and with the News Network as a whole, as I am graduating with the class of 2024 this coming May. See, I just started out as a freshman who just wanted to talk hockey, and I had the pleasure of doing so for two years with Andy, three years with Nick, and now one year with Harrison. Mm -hmm. The show has grown so much over the past four years, and I am so proud of how far it's come. And Harrison... I cannot wait to see where you take it from here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I'll do my best as host. I mean, if you told me back in the fall I would host the show, I would say you're crazy. <laughs> I have the confidence and the team behind me here at DNN, and I'm very excited to see what the future has in store for not only this show, but for you as well, and as you're going to do great things in, beyond college, I'm sure. Now, Harrison, crew, viewers, it's been real. We hope you enjoyed this episode and this series as a whole. Harrison will be back in, and better than ever in the fall with some great content for you. But for now, I'm Michaela Krupski with Harrison Soap, signing off for the final time from the Neutral Zone.